Oh, it's up there. It's in terms of this season, probably um, compare it to the Geelong game at the start of the year. And a game we went into, obviously we'd lost five in a row. No one really gave us a chance. And um, we've been playing probably two or three good quarters of footy, so to put four quarters together and um, not have any real lapses against the top side of this season and, and get the wins, obviously massive for the group. What does it say about your sort of pressure and, and your resilience with a few minutes left to be behind and, and come back again? Um, yeah, a lot. And as I just said, we've had these lapses in games where, you know, 10, 15 minutes last week against West Coast really kills us. Um, you know, Darling kicks all those goals. And then we probably had a little one in the last quarter there. They got in a bit of a roll and kicked a couple. And then so to turn that around under pressure in a, um, at the end of the game and the crowd really got behind us as well, which was nice. But to be able to just fight that out and, and get the win, um, especially that last minute, not to give anything away and, you know, a couple of repeat forward 50 stoppages, um, I was definitely feeling the pressure down there, but um, yeah, just to hold on and get that win is massive for the group going forward. As a building block, what will it do for a young group to know that if you're behind by a couple of goals late, you've got it in there? Um, yeah, it will give us confidence, especially the young guys, I guess. There'll be some in the group that haven't been in that situation before, um, and as I said, the undefeated side, to so be able to hold on, it's great confidence for us, but... Um, as I said, we've, all of our focus has been about playing four quarters of footy, um, so to be able to do that on the weekend and not that, that, let that little lapse in the last quarter go to a five-goal loss where you turn around and we win the game. So, yeah, huge confidence. Brody, obviously every game played with contentious decisions, but the Nick Murray out of bounds at the end, do you, do you think we might have, or he might have got away with one, perhaps? Oh, potentially, but the call was a throw-in, so um, that's what it was on the night. We'll back the umpires in, but... There's plenty of 50-50 calls throughout the night that can go either way. So um, I was behind him just hoping he realised we were at point down and didn't put it through the points and it might have been barrel time out of full back to avoid the draw. But, um, yeah, it's a 50-50 call. Thankfully, it went our way. Could the ball have been in any safer hands with 45 seconds left? The Texan? No, nah, it couldn't have. Um, fog the kick before as well. So our two best kicks have two shots on goal. So... Probably got a bit lucky there, but yeah, Tex backed himself in. He said he was actually quite nervous, which surprised me. He's um, normally got the cool, calm, collected Texan, but he was quite nervous. So, yeah, very good kick to put us in front. You were obviously really confident. I mean, it's a beautiful kick. It's, it says a bit about his character to go back and put it through. Yeah, absolutely. And he's done it time and time again for us and um, got a beautiful set shot. As I said, him and Fogg, probably the two best set shots I've seen. So, very confident that they were going to put them through. and. Um, yeah, thankfully he didn't. We we hold the ball down in the, those last forty seconds. Theo sort of asked it before, but in terms of I don't know if you do it as a player, but like ranking wins and, and memorable wins, do you think that this will be one that sticks out for a long time? Uh, potentially, yeah. I think you know, obviously, where we're going as a group, and we've got a young, inexperienced group, and. You know, we're looking forward to the future years where hopefully this group's going to go a long way and, and have a lot of success. We could potentially look back at that, that time we knocked off the undefeated Demons at home in that one-point game. So um, yeah, we have touched on I think it's definitely going to give the group a lot of confidence going forward that we can win these games. And We've been playing good footy but not getting results, so to get a result like that against the top sides is massive for us. Um, oh, yes and no. Um, didn't really have any real expectations. We, I guess being a senior player, I understand where the group's at and um, what we're trying to achieve this year going forward. Um, and certainly early, you know, the Geelong game, to win that was massive for us. Um, we had a great start being 3-1 and one, and then, as I said, the last really five games in a row, with the games we're in the game, but we just let ourselves down a quarter or two quarters. Obviously the Giants won, we took a big step backwards. Um, so... To be able to now come out against an undefeated side, um, play good four quarters of footy and good contested footy as well, um, puts us in good stead going forward. And as I said, there's still no expectations going forward from now, but to know that you know we can match it with the best when we're on, um, definitely good confidence for us. What do you think? What do you think Crows fans can expect though in the in the, in the months ahead? We've had some big wins and also a lot of losses. What do you think they can expect from that team? Uh, well, just that we're going to compete. That's what we're focusing on. So we talk a lot about contest and just giving absolute effort in the contest. And I think the thing that's that's been there all year and the thing that's probably let us down is a little bit of our method at times um, and the way we're using the footy, which can be expected from an inexperienced group. So um, it might be a little bit of a roller coaster for our fans, but as long as they know we're going out to, to hunt the contest and just give us as you know 100% each week, especially in that area of the game, um, they can expect that from us.
Harry sort of got away from you a little bit. Challenges don't get any harder than Richmond at the MCG. Is there sort of a way you can tighten up to limit the impact on, I mean, fair enough, these guys that are superstar players. Is there just a way you can sort of shut them down a little bit more? Yeah, yeah he had a huge night. There's no doubt about that. Um, we've, you know, Sloane went to Kelly over in Perth when he was having a good first half. Um, so there's certainly... You know, ways we've used Keyes as a tag before, but he's obviously in unbelievable form um, going the other way. So um, we can definitely use more of a defensive midfielder at times um, to shut these guys down. But at the same time, what we spoke about, we're backing our system in and our contest around the footy, but there's no doubt um, at times we definitely have to put more attention to some players that go off the chain. Like Dusty? Like Dusty, he's obviously so dangerous and we've always got a, a plan for him, um, the way he you know, goes through the midfield and then spits forward. So... We've always got a defender that's ready to pick him up in those situations, so we'll go through that during the week. Obviously, it's not going to be me, but one of the other boys can do it. Don't want to say <laughs> no. Not interested? No, not interested. Brody, do you try and take this momentum with you to Richmond, or do you just bank the win and move on to the next challenge? Uh, no, absolutely. We um, obviously go on to the G. I assume there's a lot of guys on our side that haven't played at the MCG, so it's going to be massive for us. and. Um, Richmond have obviously got their injury troubles at the moment, but they're still a quality side, and um, you know what they've done over the last few years. So Richmond at the G is a massive challenge for us, and one that we're very excited about. Brody, how do you attach? How, how do you attack tackling players these days as a defender? When you see Taylor get a fine, Nick Holman somehow get suspended, what goes through your mind as a, as a primary stopper when you're trying to tackle someone? Um, I actually had one on the weekend, funny enough, where I was in that situation. I had a guy wrapped around the waist and I went to go down and sort of stopped and just held him there. So it's pretty much that. It's not that you can't, I guess you get caught in that tackle. The second motion is the one you've got to avoid. So um, that's probably the main one that we focus on. That I think the first motion of the tackle, whatever happens is going to happen. But it's that second one of when you get caught in the tackle, that dumping motion. So I think it's the main... That's the only one really you can avoid. The rest is, is just going to happen. So, um, yeah, it's probably what we focus on. So you're cognizant of it? Hey, sorry? You're cognizant of it? Like yeah, you yeah. thought, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I can't remember who it was. It might have been... Remember when? It was in the last quarter. It might have been Jackson. I had him and had both arms and he was trying to get a handball out and I thought about going and, yeah, just dropped the weight. So um, it is a conscious thing now that you have to be careful of. Just on that tackling as well, there was a lot of contention about holding the ball, you know, particularly the Collingwood Ball game. As players, are you sort of wary of interpretation within games and having to adapt? Um, oh, not really. Like I said, it's just we go about doing what we're doing and whatever the umpires will call, they'll call. But, um, yeah, it probably goes back to asking about Mars and I say the 50-50 throughout the night. There's so many that I thought we could have got or we might have given away and we didn't. Um, so we just got to play and play to the whistle, basically, the old saying.